Welcome back to Betty. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. Do I have a special treat for you? Do you know that our young people out there today, there are so many things that they don't know how to do when they go out to a formal dinner or they're in a business meeting. You're in luck today if you have a young lady at home or a young man that can learn some etiquette. Yes, we have such a program here in Charlotte. And my guest today, Miss Ebony, is the founder of this uh, organization here and she's going to talk to us about it. Thank you for joining me today Ebony. Thank you for having me. I am so glad you're here because it is so important for our young people to learn the right way to do things while they're young. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. I mean you know that's what we have to do. We have to be a, a good example uh -huh. um, and you know it's really about information uh -huh. being able to share it and, 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 and about exposure uh -huh. and that's what we do at Miss Ebony's. Miss Ebony's is about social skills. You know, our mission is to empower youth through social programs. Any programs that empower them socially, that's kind of what we do. I don't like to box ourselves in because we're big. We're, we're, we're big in terms of empowerment. Uh -huh, uh -huh, so, uh -huh. But at the core, it's about etiquette. So, yes, we do teach our girls and our young men, you know, dining etiquette. We do that. And that's one thing that people ask us to do initially. But it really is about knowing how to present yourself, uh -huh. knowing how to be comfortable in your own skin, knowing what's socially acceptable. Huh. Because, see, a lot of times, well, majority of the times, our babies are only emulating what they get at home. That is so true. <clears throat> but before we get started talking about all of the good things you're doing, how did you even start this? Mm. Um, what is it called again? It's Miss Ebony School of Etiquette, and I am the CEO and founder ah. of Miss Ebony's. We've been around since 2000. Since but 2000? To, yes, ma'am. But to answer your question, which was, you know, about our, my, my mission and how did I get started? I got started really <clears throat> when I was a teenager. Huh. Yeah. I was, I'm a pageant girl. Um, I'm from Betty's Ford Road, West, uh -huh. West Charlotte. And my grandparents raised me, <clears throat> mm -hmm. like so many of us, who was raised by an extended family member. And they were educators. Uh -huh. My grandmother specifically was into human services. Uh -huh. And <clears throat> she did a lot of community work. So that was something that was instilled in me very early. And with that became a sense of responsibility. So when you're working for your community, you have to know how to represent your community. You're exactly right. So she taught me that very early that this is what we do. This is the work that we do. And this is how you should present yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. she would send me out from Beatty's Ford Road and I would go out to South Charlotte and I would learn white gloves and party manners. And I would serve on various boards as a teenager and preteen, as they call it, a tween now. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Back then, I was doing those things. And I was, you know, typically I was the only African-American girl that was doing uh -huh. that. So I took that information that they gave me and I brought it back to my friends. And so when I would have my tea parties that I learned over in South Charlotte, I would have them with my with my my peers in uh -huh, my neighborhood uh -huh. in the University Park area. So really, when you ask me, when did it start? It kind of started there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> it did. And it continued on through college, Winston uh -huh. Salem State University. All yes, right. A now. proud ram. <laughs> yes. Um, and even there, I had the opportunity to share what I had learned with my fellow athletes. Uh -huh. I attended Winston-Salem State on a full volleyball scholarship. Wow. So, yes, and being that I was able to um, carry myself in a different way, it was very obvious to my administrators and my coaches and my athletic directors that I was a little bit different. So they asked me, how did you know, how do you know how to, which fork to use? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh, -huh, how, uh -huh, You know, uh -huh. you carry yourself differently. And I always got that. Mm -hmm, but it started mm -hmm. because from my grandmother, very, very early. Uh -huh, it was a standard uh -huh. that was set very, very high. And so that's how I carried myself. But that became my mission, uh -huh. my personal mission to share that information with my peers. Because I've, I've never been one to sit in company of negative conversation about us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. solution driven. Uh -huh. So when I was in those conversations very early, I was with them with my grandmother and I was learning. And so I learned conflict resolution and how to how to create programs for our for us. Wow. I learned very early just from observing. So when you finished college, did you go straight into the etiquette school? No, I didn't. I uh -huh. didn't. I didn't. I went to teach language arts. A teacher. I was a well. teacher. Yes. And <laughs> um, but I, I, I learned very quickly that I'm spending the majority of my time telling you to sit up, enunciate uh. your words. No, that's not what you do. And I'm, I'm doing a lot of social things. So at the time, I had a principal that got it. 
she was an African American young lady that got it, and she was like, you know, I, I want to help you with whatever groups you want to create in school. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and so uh-huh. I started just creating girl groups at the school, and and then I started my curriculum um, development. I started uh-huh. it then, and it was from experience and from working with the girls. And by the way, and we didn't mention this, um, the majority of my audience has been grassroots. So my girls are from Title I schools. My girls are from some of the most fragile you know, communities and, and families that we have. Uh-huh. Those are the ones that I had initially begin my work. My work mm-hmm. will always be grassroots, but that's uh-huh. where it really started. So when I was working at this Title I school, I just started these girls groups, and it didn't have a name. It didn't have a face, but it had a vision. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. And that's what I worked. And I continued to work it as I worked my jobs. I did other things outside of being a language arts teacher. I'm, I'm a jack of all trades. And so my girls get to learn that, too, about me. But the main thing about me is I'm an entrepreneur. Uh-huh. That's what I learned quickly, too, is that, you know, there's not enough programs out there for our girls. So create them. Huh. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Seriously. So on that note, let's take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk some more about what you're doing with these girls. Okay. And young men. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way for a million little reasons. The kids of our communities to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. See, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor and make a difference in the life of a child for the life of that child. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Do your part. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank today. Hi, welcome back to A Better You. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. I'm here with Miss Ebony. And Miss Ebony, oh my God, you have really had a journey from teaching to having your very own Miss Ebony. Yes. School yes. of Etiquette. God is good. And I am so glad you have this school. And you said you started it when again? I started it, I really started officially as a business in 2000. Uh huh, uh huh. But again, as you said, as, as we talked earlier, you know, I've been doing it for quite some time, but I, we became an official business in 2000. Congratulations. Thank you. Because <laughs> that's a lot of work, I'm sure. It, it has been quite a journey. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. So, with your school, what exactly do you do with the young ladies? What type of programs do you have? I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> we have um, really a variety of all types of programs uh-huh. that are all um, centered around empowerment of our girls. Our our premier program is Diva Day Camp for Girls. Huh. And Diva Day Camp is a summer day camp that we run in the summer, typically from eight from eight to ten weeks. And it's all about self discovery. It's about the girls learning how to be girls, how to how to love themselves, uh-huh. goal setting, entrepreneurship, health and wellness, diversity and inclusion, all those things wow. we address. And it's um like during the summer day hours during the summer. Uh-huh. The how- summer day. 
how do they need to be to be a part of this school? Oh, we just take them at ages 5 to 14. We typically, mm -hmm. we've been located um, all over Charlotte. We've been everywhere oh. from churches to West Charlotte High School. My my alumni, I'm, I'm also graduated from West Charlotte. Um, and so I really have a love for that community. We've been, we've been all over in Charlotte and we were blessed to be at the Harvey B. Gantt Center this past summer. Wow. So yeah, it was, it was exciting. So Diva Day Camp is our premier program. Diva Day Camp also services students during the school year when school is out. So say if there's a teacher work day or a spring break or a fall break, then we're in. Uh -huh. And I partner up with different organizations to offer my programs, you know, at their location. Uh -huh. Because we don't have a physical location. I've had physical locations before. You know, Ms. Ebony's has gone through transition. Mm -hmm. But now we pretty much, we, we come to you. Our services can come to you. If oh, you have a that space, is good too. It really works very well. And then I work with school systems and civic organizations and things like that. Mm -hmm. So Diva Day Camp is very mobile. She is. <laughs> yeah, and then we have white gloves and party manners, and that teaches the girls how to be a hostess uh -huh. and how to conduct themselves at a tea party and what that means and, you know, when you're having the tea party, what you talk about and that kind of stuff. Uh -huh, they uh -huh. love that as well. And then we have the Angels Modeling Troupe. And that really? other girls, yeah. And the angels have they took a little break because you know sometimes you have other programs. Uh, girls are more interested in other programs than maybe one. And that's one thing about Miss Ebony's too. We're able to I'm able to cater to my audience because I'm really in their community. So uh -huh, I see uh -huh. when the need shifts, mm -hmm. and I see that they needed more of this than that. Then we put more emphasis in different uh -huh. programs. But we have the angels modeling troupe where they actually learn how to model. They learn how to participate in a fashion show and all uh -huh. aspects of a fashion show. It's about, you know, more about fashion and, you know, uh, the things that really, and, and that's always an attraction when you say modeling over etiquette mm -hmm, because they mm -hmm. don't always know what etiquette means. So initially in some of those early months of Miss Ebony's when I was recruiting girls, that was my decoy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I kind of led with Miss with uh, the modeling troupe and that got them in and then uh -huh. the etiquette kind of began. Because, you know, uh -huh. again, people don't always know what etiquette means. Um, that is so true. Yeah. And then um, finally we have right now one of our newer programs, which are for young men. Which is belts and bow ties. And what is that all about? Belts and bow ties is about <laughs> chivalry. It's about bringing chivalry back. It's about introducing them as what a gentleman is and really showing them what that looks like. A uh -huh. really positive outlook and blueprint for what that looks like. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, so we're excited. We're actually partnering with a couple of all male serving organizations uh -huh, where we're uh -huh. going to roll that out in the fall. And we're going to use those as some of the test pilot places for belts and bow ties. So we're excited about that. I know that you've done, uh, you're doing a lot of stuff with our young people. Mm -hmm. Do you tackle tough problems, issues? Do you have roundtable discussions with them? Mm -hmm. Awesome question. Uh -huh. One of the key things that we do in, day, in Diva Day Camp when we start our day is we have um, Girl Talk. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And during girl talk, that's that time to really get honest and transparent with each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. when some of those issues that you're inquiring about, that's when they come out. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Yes, when I do a lot of this work with the school systems and things like that, it's about that conversation. It's uh -huh, about uh -huh. hearing what is troubling them. It's about trying to figure out why they feel the way they feel about themselves and their community. Mm -hmm. And you notice I keep putting in community. And yes. I'm going to tell you why. Because it all goes back to that. It all goes back to where we're from. It all goes back to how we feel about where we're from, mm -hmm. which means how we represent ourselves when we're out. See, you can't disconnect mm -hmm. from one or the other. So a lot of times, I'm just showing them the connection uh -huh. that they have and the responsibility that they have for our community, which represents our race. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing for Girls of Color is showing you how important we really are and what expectations that we should have of each other uh -huh, uh -huh, in the community. Uh -huh. And we do that in Diva Day. Uh -huh. because I make them accountable and they talk and they get it out and it's just a good safe place uh -huh. to have a great conversation. Have you been getting a lot of support from the parents of these kids? Absolutely. My, I've had parents um, that I've had for years uh -huh. and now I have their second child. You know, and I have their nieces and that. So, yes, we, uh -huh. we, we get it because they get it. Uh -huh, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. and a lot of times we have to let go for a minute and let someone else come into our girls' lives that may be able mm -hmm, to add a little mm -hmm. something that we can't. Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. maybe we need to 
kind of brush up on ourselves a little bit too. Maybe I was we about to ask go. you, do you have any programs for well, adults? And, and we do. And now I'm being asked to conduct more parent workshops. I've been asked by a couple of charter schools to do some classes specifically for the parents around etiquette and social skills and things like oh. that. So absolutely. Again, this is an a, a issue that we all tackle together. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. it's just that I'm more focused on that social skill, that, that etiquette piece. It's uh -huh, just, uh -huh. that's just who I am. So, but it works for all of us. It's a uh -huh. team, team effort. When I bring it to them, they want it or they come to me. It just, it works out, you know. Uh-huh. You know, Ebony, let's take a short break and we come back. I got some more questions for you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's not his new group of friends. It's not the video games. It's not the neighborhood. Mom. Do I have to go to school today? The biggest threat to your child's future could be you. Every day they miss, even in middle school, puts their graduation at risk. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Hi, and welcome back to the Betty. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. I'm here with Miss Ebony. And oh my God, I love the work that you're doing in our community. You're doing so much and it's growing and growing yes. and growing. How are you doing is surely not all by yourself. Right, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I've been blessed to have uh, volunteers uh -huh. in the form of interns. I work with a lot of youth. Good. And um, youth that are striving to be entrepreneurs, uh -huh. youth that are striving to be social workers, youth that are striving to be public servants. Uh -huh. Those are the ones who typically find me and say, I huh. want to be a part of this mission and this vision. And God has just blessed me with the right, the right people, the right young people. Uh -huh. So I have them, I have, I do have a board of directors. Huh. So I do have some people behind me that can write checks and that can, cause that's important. Yeah, that helps. And they have to be able to believe in what we're doing. Uh -huh. And it takes resources to be able to, to implement these programs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yes, we do have um, people in the community mm -hmm. and a board behind us and parents and, and people like you who allow me to come yes. and talk about Miss Ebony's and spread the word. So mm -hmm. yeah, we do have a lot of supporters. Mm -hmm. So tell me, if by chance I wanted to volunteer and do something with your group, what are some of the things that I would need to do or some of the steps that I would need to take to be a part of Miss Ebony? Yes, well simply, and, we all, and I'm glad you're asking me that because we look for all types of uh -huh. volunteers. Volunteers can be in the single form of we have an event coming up and they wanna be, they wanna help out just like, you know, with logistics or mm -hmm. volunteer or partnership could be like they wanna be a sponsor it's all different types of ways you can connect with us. Uh -huh. And so I, I asked you to go to the website. It's really simple. It's www.missebenice.com with an oh. S. 
Okay. And when you and when you go on the website, you'll see a contact tab, and you'll uh -huh. go there, and you can just reach out, uh -huh. and we'll get you we'll get you involved. And what I like to do is really talk to people and find out, you know, what what do they want out of this experience? What are they looking for? Uh huh. And you know, if it's a good fit, we'll gladly have you come in. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, you've been doing this for quite some time now. It may sound like it's a little baby, but it's really much bigger than that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty big. much bigger than that. Yeah. And I know you've been to working with a lot of different kids, adults. Can you share with us a success story from your work that you've been doing with this? Yes, and I have many success stories, uh -huh. not to, br to brag or anything, it's just the truth. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But this particular young lady who, um, and I won't say her name because I didn't ask her uh -huh, if I uh -huh. could do that. So, But I will say that she came to me through one of my closest friends, sister, it was her daughter. And she was one of three, mm -hmm. and she came from a low-income home. Mm -hmm. where she didn't have a whole lot of um, positive role models as mm -hmm. um, just a, a young black girl. And uh, she started with my modeling program, very pretty, uh -huh. but never knew she was pretty. Very shy, uh -huh. um, very introverted. Um, and she stayed with me from about fourth grade all the way until she graduated from North Carolina A&T. Now it's been a year. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And she, she relocated, working doing her thing, teaching, oh. um, and she's so proud of herself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The empowerment that she feels about herself, I know that I had a lot to do with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that makes me feel so good, and, and it's pushed me uh -huh. to, to do more of that. You know, she's made me proud beyond words. Uh -huh. um, yeah, she's, it's just been great, you uh -huh. know, and she's been able to see me grow as an entrepreneur. She's been able to see Miss Ebony's really since its inception. And now she's able to add value to it in terms of advice uh -huh, uh -huh. to Miss Ebony's about wh how she feels and what she thinks. And that's fabulous because she's been through uh -huh, the program. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And then, you know, my counselors in training for Diva, for Diva Day Camp, they've been through Diva Day Camp. So, you know, the mentorship program, it's, it starts very, very mm. early. And my girls are graduating from college. They're lawyers. They're physical therapists. You know, they're school teachers. They're social workers. And they're beautiful black girls uh -huh. that just needed a boost. They always could fly. Uh -huh, uh -huh, that was uh -huh. never an issue. I just provided them with a longer runway. Uh -huh. Showed them how to walk it. So you and gave them they, that little seed and it's a beautiful flower. Yeah. Now. It's awesome. And uh -huh. just to, you know, see them on Facebook and when they call me, <laughs> it's just amazing. It makes me feel a tad bit older. But, you know, uh -huh. that's the way it's supposed to be, you know. So what does the future look like for Miss Ebony? Wow. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's pretty bright. We're uh -huh. going to continue to build upon Miss Ebony's, but also branching out to br more of branding for Ebony. Uh -huh. So I think you'll see more programs under just Miss Ebony A. Moore. You'll see Miss Ebony's grow. You'll see a lot of things, but it'll all be centered around etiquette. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, we're going. We're going to take some things national. Uh huh. You know, because really there's a state of emergency about our girls. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. So we're going to talk about that and attack it. And create some solutions. So yeah, you're gonna Miss Ebony's is it's really just kind of getting started, rear back up. So, so when you say there's a state of emergency for our girls, what mm -hmm. exactly do you mean by that? State of emergency because our role models are reality stars, uh huh, uh huh, and are doing and acting and conducting themselves in ways that is definitely not acceptable for our people. Mm -hmm. But we think that it is which makes it a state of emergency. Mm -hmm. We don't have time to try to figure that out. The time is now mm -hmm. to stop it. And because and see, if we don't support it, it won't be there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I see it more and more, more and more when I go into schools, how the girls are dressed, how they behave, how they snicker, how they carry themselves, because they think that's cute. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, they don't think like the Michelle, Michelle Obama, first lady, yeah. they don't think that that's so much cute. They think the ratchetness is cute. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a state of emergency, and we're going to attack it, and we're going to create solutions. We're going to make us, we as black women, we're going to be accountable because it's time for us to be accountable for these girls. And, you know, it's, it's a long time coming. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm just trailblazing blazing from Miss Hattie. And you're on your way. Yeah, I believe so. You know, one last question, please. If you could have anything you wanted to make this etiquette program that you have going really sore, what would it be? More resources. Uh-huh. Because Miss Ebony's Diva Day Camp should be really free for our community. Yes. 
you know? So I'm out here pounding the pavement, making sure that we have it. So more resources. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Just people to step up and say, you know what? I got a group of girls in my neighborhood that need something like that. Me and a couple of others going to get together and figure out how. And that's what I say, being responsible for our community. Mm -hmm. These are girls that come from our communities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and in the summertime and out of school time when they're not doing anything and the loss of learning occurs, you know, it's just it is it's, it's a it's a cycle for our community uh -huh. and it's something that you know I'm passionate about mm -hmm. so to answer your question it would be more resources <laughs> I know that you mentioned your website earlier can yes. you repeat that for my viewers so they make sure they got it Absolutely. so they can go to it and yes. see all the work that you're doing yes it's www.missebenies with an s dot com you know what we are out of time believe it or not I know it was quick I am so glad you came on my show because this is a great program and I believe in it and you're gonna do Big thing. Thank you, I Ms. know Cynthia. it. I appreciate you for having uh -huh. me. And I want to thank each and every one of you for watching my show, A Better You, here on Public Access 21 every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. you